Welcome to Data Muellum. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to get notified for more interesting videos. Previously in part 1 of the Monday.com data integration, we saw how to fetch data using API. However, many of the viewers faced one or the other issues. This video will be your one-stop solution for all the problems. So keep watching till the end. Let us get started. In this workspace, we can see there are five different boards. Sprints, epics, retrospectives and etc. For each board, we have several different fields. We also have different items and sub-items on each board. Now we need to access the developer portal to build the input query. Click on the account and then click the developers tab. Once done it will redirect the page to the developers portal. Now click on the API playground to build the query. Here you can see the query is auto-generated. Mainly we have board, ID, name, items, columns, and linked items. Board relation value is necessary to get to the link to it. We also have groups and their sub-items. You can refetch the GraphQL schema. We can align the query by clicking on the Prettify Query button. Now execute the query to see the results. We can see the output is fetched based on the board ID provided. All the items are displayed with values and types. We can verify the status and priority as an example. Moving on to the linked items, we can see the epic is one of the related fields fetched through the board relative value query. The linked items are displayed with both the ID and the value which can be used to connect two different boards. We can see the epics board has the item ID which is the same ID fetched through the other board. We can add or remove the fields. As I have removed the board relative value and run the query, the values will not be displayed. Once I re-add the board relation value the output is shown with the linked items. We can also see the history of queries run which is a very important feature of this API playground, which makes it very feasible to test the queries and see the history to compare. We can edit, mark as favorite, and delete if not required. This makes a proper playground to test the APIs and generate the queries for any integrations. If we are stuck at some point and want to properly understand the API, we have complete documentation to refer to and understand every aspect. Once we finish the query building, we must copy this and convert it into one line. We can do that online, I am using tools.knowledgewalls.com. Once we paste the query, we just need to click on convert to convert it into one line. Now copy this final query, replace the not required fields and add this to the M query. Also, I have shown how to get the API key in the first part of this video. Click on the above card for the video. I have added the link for the sample M query in the description. Add the int clause which always ends with the last transformation, in our case it is data. Now let us copy this M query and create a new dataset. Click on the new source and then select blank query. Click on the right tick mark to save and then open the advanced editor and replace the M query we just copied. As we can see there are no syntax errors. Now we can click on done. Once done, it will show the boards and the list. Now mainly expanding all the fields, just go on clicking on the records and the list to get the final records. Once we are done with those fields, click on to table to convert it into a table. Now again we need to expand these records to get the records. Don't forget to click on load more option, if not selected then we will miss the fields inside it. Continue expanding. Once all the fields are completely expanded, we need to remove the fields which are not required. Here we don't need both ID and text value, so let us remove the column type and text value. Now we need to merge the two value fields into one merged column to create a field value pair to mainly pivot the table. So click on the merge column in the transform tab and click OK. Now let us select the fields to pivot and form the final table. Click on the pivot column transformation. 
And don't forget to change the advanced settings to remove the aggregate values. Click OK. We can compare the data with the Monday board for validation. We can also remove unused columns if required. And also rename the column names for better readability. Also, let us rename the query to projects. So we have successfully fetched one board. Now we need to fetch the other boards as well like epics, sprints, and so on. Let us replicate the same for epics as an example. Now we have tables projects and epics. Let us close and apply to load the data in the power view. Now we need to create a relationship between these two tables. Let us delete the auto-generated relationship and create an actual relation between the item IDs. Now let us create a visual to represent the data. Add item ID and name from projects. Also, add epic names from epics, and rename the column name to epic name. Now let us do a test by adding the missing values with some values. Go back to the Monday board and add the missing epics. Once added, let us refresh the report. And there we go, the data is refreshed. Similarly, we can get the data from other boards join them together, and build our reports and dashboards. In this way, we can integrate the monday.com board data into Power BI. I hope I have answered all the issues faced by everyone. I see that 98% of you are enjoying the content but haven't subscribed yet. If you're liking what you see and want to stay in the loop with all my future videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It helps the channel grow. Stay tuned and subscribe for more interesting videos. Hope you liked this video, if you have then please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching.